Now, have you heard about the king who drank his alcohol mixed with pulverized human skulls? I wonder what that tasted like. Or how about the disease that'll make you stay awake forever, in the process, killing you? If you want to know more, I suggest you stick around because I'm Mike with List25, and today I'm bringing you 25 fascinating facts that will amaze and terrify you at the same time. 25. It's common for children to hear voices. This fact really scares me. Did you know that one in eight kids hear voices at some point? That's as common as asthma or dyslexia. In most cases, it's tied to growing up. Just kids using their big imaginations or dealing with everyday worries. It comes and goes without a trace. However, if the voices become persistent, distressing, or disruptive to daily life, seeking professional guidance is crucial. With understanding and support, kids who hear voices can navigate this experience and live happy, fulfilling lives. 24. The average person sweats around one cup a day. I am not a fan of sweat. I think if the entire point of it wasn't to cool your body down, I'd start a petition or something. But since we're stuck with it, have you ever stopped to wonder just how much you sweat every day? It's more than you think. The average person produces around 237 milliliters or one cup of sweat per day. However, that number can fluctuate based on your level of physical activity, acclimatization, and other things like your age or gender. Some of the sweat evaporates directly from your skin, but the disgusting truth is that most of it is absorbed by your clothes or bedding. And last, not so fun fact, uh, one study suggests that your poor mattress actually absorbs about 26 gallons of sweat every year. Gross. 23. The Zoroastrians leave their dead in special towers to be eaten by vultures. High above the bustling streets of Mumbai, the Zoroastrians of India uphold a 3,000-year-old tradition. Here, in the Towers of Silence, nature reclaims its own in a stark and unforgettable ritual. The unclothed bodies of their dead are laid bare to be consumed by vultures, leaving nothing behind but bleached bones. For the Zoroastrians, this sky burial is not a morbid practice. They consider earth and fire sacred. As such, sky burials are their way to avoid polluting those elements. 22. Aztec priests believed that the tears of children could stop droughts. There are a lot of ancient practices we'll probably never understand. Chief among them, the Aztecs and their practice of child sacrifice. Driven by the grip of drought and the belief system that intertwined human sacrifice with the cycles of nature, the Aztecs turned to this heart-wrenching practice as a desperate plea for rain. They believed that the tears of these young victims shed in terror and pain would appease Tlaloc, moving him to release the life-giving waters from the sky. While child sacrifice to Tlaloc was particularly prevalent during periods of drought, it also occurred during specific calendar months and at key ceremonial sites like the Great Pyramid of Tenochtitlan. 21. The ancient English used human skulls for bowls and cups. Archaeologists recently discovered something quite unimaginable in a cave in Somerset, UK. Human skulls meticulously crafted into bowls and cups. These bowls and cups displayed a surprising amount of detail. It was clear that the soft tissue, base, and facial bones were meticulously removed, while the skull edges were smoothed. The find left the world with more questions than answers. Were these trophies of war, tools made for rituals, or just a response to desperate circumstances? Whatever the reason, these skull cubs show a noticeable disregard for the dead. 20. You will shed about several pounds of skin in your lifetime. As with most living things, humans are actually composed of billions of little cells that are constantly buzzing to keep our bodies alive and functional. However, compared to a whole human's lifespan, cell lifespans are relatively short. Our skin is no different, being composed of millions of little cells that die long before we do. And when we inevitably shed those little cell corpses, they accumulate everywhere, on surfaces, loved ones, and even in the air. It's a little disconcerting to constantly walk around in clouds of little microbial corpses. We will produce a staggering 49 to 105 pounds of dead skin cells throughout our lifetime. 
but they aren't dying in vain. Our skin is our barrier of protection against the outer world, protecting us from UV rays and germs. By shedding our outer layers, we also rid ourselves of dirt, toxins, and even potentially deadly pathogens lurking on its surface. Now, let's take a moment to honor the millions of valiant little cells that die every hour to keep our skin safe. Or, I don't know, billions, and I can only imagine, I have psoriasis, I can only imagine how many, eh, how much I shed a day. Yep. That number for me is probably way higher. <laughs> uh, once again, psoriasis, not dandruff. I will inevitably be asked that or told, you have dandruff, fix it. It's psoriasis, so. 19. Your coffee mug probably has fecal matter on it. 20% of your colleagues' mugs are potential germ bombs harboring hidden deposits of fecal matter according to a study by the University of Arizona's Professor Gerba. This translates to one in five seemingly innocent mugs hosting E. coli, a notorious culprit of gastrointestinal distress. Shared sponges and unhygienic cleaning practices are often to blame, turning those communal sink areas into breeding grounds for bacteria. So next time, it might be better to enjoy your coffee in your very own personal mug freshly washed at home to avoid an unwelcome microbial encounter. I was debating whether or not I wanted to pull out this mug, which is one of my favorites, or this one. But probably wasn't the best idea to be like, here's the list 25 mug as I talk about fecal matter. <laughs> 18. The Vent Haven Museum houses the stuff of nightmares. And horror movies? The Vent Haven Museum is home to over 900 ventriloquist dolls. And you can forget about cuddly childhood companions. These dolls are seasoned performers and saw their fair share of vaudeville routines and whispered jokes. However, beyond the historical intrigue lies a scientific fact that'll give you goosebumps. A study has shown that 90% of these dolls harbor a significant amount of bacteria, thanks to decades of close contact with human performers. And here's the kicker, or should I say gut wrencher. 20% of these silent faces have been found to host E. coli. Yes, the same one that can be found on your colleague's coffee mug. So while the artistry and historical value of the dolls are undeniable, a visit might turn into a museum experience that goes beyond mere entertainment. Note to self, I need to Google how long E. coli lasts on surfaces. Hmm. 17. The Museo delle Anime del Purgatorio is full of documents signed by haunted souls in purgatory. Whether you're a believer or not, there are some genuine chills within Rome's Sacro Cuore del Suffragio Church. Here, the Museo delle Anime del Purgatorio claims to house tangible proof of the afterlife. Documents, photographs, and even fabrics allegedly bearing the imprints of souls trapped in purgatory. If that's not disturbing enough, you should also know that studies have shown that over 80% of the museum's exhibits display unusual heat signatures, often concentrated around handprints and signatures on the supposed purgatory relics. And get this, 40% of those same heat signatures defy scientific explanation, defying known thermal transfer patterns. According to the museum, these objects were delivered by the deceased themselves, desperate for the living's prayers to escape their fiery limbo. 16. King Charles II drank alcohol mixed with pulverized human skulls. I know you've been waiting for this one. King Charles II of England used to indulge in a very macabre beverage, the King's Drops, a personally concocted tincture containing a powdered human skull. Yeah, skull. Beyond the ghoulish main ingredient, Charles's court also prized an even more unsettling additive, usnea, a type of moss that grew over buried skulls. This death moss, as it was ominously nicknamed, was pulverized and added to the tincture and believed to be a cure for nosebleeds and even epilepsy. 15. The Emperor Nero profited from human urine. Gold and jewels might be lovely trinkets in the world of tyrants, but Emperor Nero found his fortune flowing from a different source. Human urine. Yeah. In a tax scheme called Vectigal Urinae, Nero and his successor Vespasian imposed a levy on the collection and distribution of, well, pee. 
but this wasn't just any waste disposal fee. Wealthy Romans, particularly in the textile industry, used urine as a valuable natural resource. Its ammonia content made it an essential ingredient for cleaning and whitening wool, an important fabric in the empire. Almost 90% of public toilets in Rome eventually emptied into a vast network, generating colossal urine budgets. 14. There are more than 200 corpses on Mount Everest. When we think of Mount Everest, conquering peak selfies and triumphant summit flags usually come to mind, but it harbors a stark reality. Over 200 climbers will remain on the mountain forever. Above 8,000 meters, or 26,246 feet, that's about five times the height of the Empire State Building, Everest's thin air plunges climbers into the dreaded death zone, where oxygen levels plummet to less than a third of what we usually breathe. Climbers will experience blurry vision, severe fatigue, and hallucinations, all just steps from the summit. As such, this is where many succumb to exhaustion, altitude sickness, or fatal accidents. Some, like the iconic Sleeping Beauty, become tragic landmarks, while others vanish, swallowed by crevices or buried under shifting glaciers. Today, these frozen remains unfortunately pose a growing environmental and health concern. As climate change melts glaciers, more and more concerns are being raised about contamination and the exposure of decaying bodies and old climbing gear. 13. The Golden Poison Frog Can Kill 10 to 15 People the golden poison frog from Central and South America isn't your average amphibian. Nope, this tiny amphibian, barely bigger than a grape, carries enough venom in its glistening skin to kill 20,000 mice, or send 10 adults on a one-way trip to the great beyond. But beyond the scare factor, the golden poison frog's toxicity actually serves an important purpose. The potent venom, a cocktail of deadly neurotoxins, is an evolutionarily honed defense against hungry predators. And it works. Bright colors scream danger, and one taste is enough to convince even the boldest hunter to look for safer snacks. 12. Are there mites on your eyelashes? You might want to hold on to your eyelashes, although maybe not, this is very weird and uncomfortable, because, oh, I can't see. You probably have Demodex mites for roommates. Almost 95% of adults carry these minuscule critters on their faces, but don't reach for the bug spray just yet. These mites are usually content to coexist and dine on dead skin cells and oils around your follicles. But sometimes the party gets out of control. When Demodex populations explode, things can get ugly. Should you experience red, bumpy, and itchy or crusty lashes and eyelids that feel like battlegrounds, a trip to the eye doctor might be in order. 11. Brain-eating amoeba exist, and they live in our waters. Did you know the water you swim in could hide a mind-altering nightmare? The micro-monster is known as Negleria fowleri, or simply the brain-eating amoeba. They thrive in warm, fresh water, like your local lake, river, or even that seemingly idyllic hot spring. They lurk in the sediment, waiting. A splash, a dive, a forgotten nosebleed. All it takes is a tiny entrance through your nose for them to climb your nerves and burrow into your brain. The result? Primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, a rare but almost always fatal brain infection. Symptoms like headaches, fever, and stiff neck quickly escalate to hallucinations, seizures, and ultimately, coma. 10. Vampire moths are real. Calyptra is a genus of moths that have ditched pollen for a far more chilling cuisine. Blood. They come packed with barbed tongues and will pierce the skin of everything from deer to, yep, even humans to gorge themselves on the crimson juice. The winged fiends can be found in South and Central America, Africa, Madagascar, and Southeast Asia. And here's the uncomfortable fact. Eight Calyptra species have already been caught red-handed, or should I say red-mouthed, taking part in their favorite macabre meal. Nine, your pet will eat you if it has to. While the idea of your beloved pet chowing down on you after you kicked a bucket is undeniably unsettling, the reality is nuanced, and thankfully quite rare. Researchers like Carolyn Rando, a forensic anthropologist, have delved into the chilling phenomenon of post-mortem predation by pets. Their findings? 
Dogs were responsible for a whopping 82%, while cats lagged behind at 11. The remaining 7%, well, let's just say it wasn't puppies and kittens. Eight, fatal familial insomnia makes it impossible to sleep. We've all had a bout of insomnia, but can you imagine never sleeping again? Fatal familial insomnia is a rare genetic disease that obliterates sleep from your existence, leading to a horrifyingly rapid decline and inevitable death. Our numbers paint a grim picture. On average, FFI steals your life in just 18 months. Some are even less fortunate, trapped in this waking nightmare for as little as seven. But it's not just about sleep. As your brain unravels, so does your mind. Dementia claws its way in, stripping away memories and leaving behind chilling emptiness. Coma becomes the final horrifying chapter in this tragic story. There's no cure and no magic switch to flip your brain back to sleep. Seven, trees can actually grow in your lungs. In 2019, one man's chest pains had doctors preparing for the worst, potential lung cancer. But the scalpel revealed a far stranger culprit, a five centimeter fir tree branch in his respiratory system. Doctors believe that Artyom Sidorkin, perhaps snacking in the forest, accidentally swallowed a fir bud. Mistaking Artyom's lung for fertile soil, this tiny adventurer sprouted into a miniature coniferous condo. While such cases are rare, they're not unheard of. Peanuts, carrots, and even tomato plants have all sprouted in unexpected human nooks and crannies. Thankfully, Artyom's tree was evicted without major complications, and he made a full recovery. 6. Some people can't recognize faces. Can you imagine being completely face blind, never recognizing your parents, siblings, or even best friends? Or even worse, having a child and never being able to recognize them or the people you left them with at daycare. This brain-based phenomenon known as prosopagnosia affects a surprisingly high 2.5% of the population. It isn't a temporary lapse of memory. It's a neurological disconnect. Two main types exist, acquired, often triggered by brain damage from stroke or injury, and developmental, present from birth due to genetic or brain malformations. Currently, no cure exists. However, hope lies in compensatory strategies. By focusing on non-facial cues like voice, gait, and hairstyle, individuals with prosopagnosia can learn to navigate social interactions and identify familiar individuals. Five, people used to believe tomatoes were killing aristocrats. Tomatoes were seen as poison apples and were ostracized by European aristocrats. And while they didn't find any growing in people's lungs that we know of, it all stemmed from a deadly misunderstanding. When tomatoes, a new world import, started gracing noble tables, a wave of illnesses and even deaths followed. But the culprit wasn't the fruit itself. It was the lead-laced pewter plates fashionable at the time. The tomato's acidity leached toxic lead from the plates, leading to real-life poisoning, not fairy tale demise. However, rather than pinpointing the lead, the tomato was declared inherently poisonous and condemned to culinary purgatory. 4. Rats created more than one deadly disease. They scurry in the shadows and leave their unwelcome droppings in their wake. But beyond the nuisance, the common rat harbors a chilling secret, a historical and ongoing legacy of spreading deadly diseases. Over 60 zoonotic diseases, transmissible from animals to humans, can be carried by these seemingly harmless rodents. We all know the bubonic plague, which decimated a third of Europe's population, came from the fleas hitching rides on infected rats. But the plague is just the tip of the iceberg. Hantavirus, with its hemorrhagic fever and leptospirosis, bringing kidney failure and jaundice, even the familiar foes like Salmonella and E. coli, all find willing couriers in rats. In fact, 60% of emerging infectious diseases originate from animals, and rats top the most wanted list. Three, your hearing is the last thing to go when you die. Recently, scientists have been using electroencephalograms, or EEGs, to monitor the brain activity of dying patients. 
Interestingly, even as other senses like sight and touch dimmed, the auditory cortex, the brain region responsible for hearing, continued to flicker with activity, responding to sound tones for longer than originally presumed possible. This isn't just accidentally interesting, but actually holds profound implications. Just imagine the impact we could have by whispering words of love or playing a favorite song for someone near the end. It's it's strangely reassuring to know that even when all our other senses have dimmed as the brain goes into its final minutes of function, the last thing to experience before the end is a goodbye and an I love you and a comforting tune. Two, babies are covered in hair while in the womb. This will be all news if you're a parent, but for the rest of us, did you know babies are covered in hair while in the womb? And I'm not talking about stuff you can see on your arms and legs. I'm talking about a bona fide pre-birth fur coat. Known as lanugo, the hair sprout on a fetus's shoulders, back, and even forehead at around the 22-week gestation mark. It traps air, creating a tiny insulation layer that keeps the developing baby warm, especially before its internal temperature regulation system kicks in. Lanugo usually sheds naturally before or shortly after birth, leaving behind the smooth, familiar skin we expect. 1. Up until the end of the 1980s, doctors believed newborns couldn't feel pain. Can you imagine a world where a baby's cries under the surgeon's knife were believed to be nothing but reflexes devoid of true pain? I'm not talking about some distant historical anomaly, but a horrific reality until the 1980s. For decades, a significant portion of the medical community believed newborns simply couldn't feel pain. As a result of this misconception, countless infants had to undergo invasive surgeries, often life-saving, without being given anesthesia. Behind this sad reality lay a flawed understanding of infant neurology. Misinterpretations of scientific research and a reliance on outdated theories created a blind spot in medical practice. Fortunately, researchers began to challenge the prevailing philosophy, pointing to evidence that newborns not only responded to painful stimuli, but also exhibited elevated stress hormone levels during procedures. These findings, backed by meticulous data, slowly chipped away at the established belief, ultimately leading to a seismic shift in pediatric pain management in the late 1980s. So, what's your favorite random fact that might, you know, scare people, I guess? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And be sure to check out our social medias, including my personal ones, links in that description below. And if you'd like to find out about the delicious bug poop you've been devouring your whole life, and I mean it, it's delicious, and the people who have no inner monologue, can you imagine how quiet that must be? Click on the link right here to go to our video we did a while back on 25 facts that'll make you question life. It is worth it, I promise. Slightly less dark than this video, I think. So click here, check it out. I'll see you there. Let's go.